I spend a lot of time just thinking, just thinking, thinking. I feel like there's this little easel in the front of my brain, and there's this canvas or a piece of paper in the front of my brain, and I'm just drawing on it and, and moving the things around, moving the figures around, making them here, making them big, you know. So it, you don't see very much to begin with, and then it starts happening on the paper or in the canvas. Uh, right now, I'm working on a big commission for the New Hope Housing in Houston. This is housing for transitional uh, people who are going through getting off the streets and getting into uh, low-rent housing. And uh, the architects who are working on redeveloping or redesigning this, uh, what used to be a motel, have asked me to design four metal cutout murals for the uh, four buildings of the, the complex. The issue with getting an artist involved with the um, Brace Crossing project came about, as I was talking about, you know, we had a building that was three feet out of the ground. And part of the process of getting around the buildings is to create porches in front of four of the buildings. And as we created those porches, we realized there were two things that were impacting us. One is we needed to get around the site. And the second was there is a, a HUD, a Housing and Urban Development requirement, to mitigate the sound that was coming off the freeway. The site that we have is very close to, well, it's on the Frida Road for Interstate 45, the Gulf Freeway going from Houston to Galveston. And so there's a lot of noise generated by that freeway. That created, as we defined what that meant to us, that created a need for a wall that was going to be 14 feet tall and 500 feet long, which was the, the width of the property, the, the frontage of the, of the property itself. And so that porch, if we had just had that blank sound wall, 500 feet long, one that would be very dull. But the second thing was, as the porches are created in front of the buildings, there'd be very dark places the porches would be. And so we started defining that front wall and saying, where can we get some light through that wall? As we got through that, and we knew that we wanted to make some kind of um, visual statement to the to freeway, uh, we wanted to make something special happen. And so rather than just doing a perforated steel panel that just had a series of circles on some pattern, we decided, we decided that really we could actually make a, a statement with some imagery there that would relate to the neighborhood, which is in the Hispanic area of town. Well, we found Carmen Lomas Garza uh, really kind of in an interesting way. It was in some ways somewhat serendipitous. Um, two or three years before we uh, got the project to do Brace Crossing, um, my wife and I had visited the uh, San Antonio Museum of Art and um, we'd happened to see one of her pieces on the front lobby wall. It was a, it was a large piece, and uh, it was a, a black uh, steel uh, cutout that must have been 10 feet by, I always think of it as like 10 by 18 feet. Uh, and it was hanging in front of a brilliant yellow wall. And it was such a stunning image. Uh, it just really just it was obviously stuck in my head. And, um, what was impressive to me about that piece was its size, but also the transformation of the paper cutout tradition as a, as a visual tradition that, that uh, Mexican Americans have been working with for a long period of time. In fact, my, one of my grandmothers also did that in Brownsville. Uh, so, being you know aware of the of that tradition and watch and seeing it completely transformed into a storytelling device uh, was really what was impressive to me. So the paper cutouts is something that I've been working on since 19, 1970, along with my color work, the, the paintings, the prints, the, the drawings. Um, it's, it's another medium that I, is just as important as the paintings. So what I'm working on is the paper cutouts uh, that are smaller scale that will then be scanned with a high resolution camera and then they'll be digitized and then they will do the actual murals which are going to be 14 feet high by 48 feet long. I couldn't have any holes on the actual metal cutout be bigger than six inches. So on my paper cutout design I have to make sure that the cutout ha doesn't have any holes that are wider than an inch. 
because we're working on a scale of uh, one inch equals to six inches on the, the actual mural. Well, this was a large scale project. Um, the, the murals, there are going to be four of them. There were four buildings that touched the, the sound wall. And because of the height of the, the sound wall, they were already 14 feet tall, and the buildings are 48 feet wide. So that set the, the format for these objects, for these images. And that, that was really big. And I think that was the other reason that Carmen's image of her grandfather watering the garden came to mind, because it was such a big image already. It's kind of like, this can work, this can happen. And so um, I thought that that was all within her cap capabilities that I, you know, in some way or another I'd already kind of pre-vetted or kind of proved to myself that she has the capacity to kind of deal with something this big. And that's how we got to the idea of wanting to be able to, to do some artwork on the building itself. It was a really a need for light behind, uh, in the porches on the, on the ground floor. Tissue paper today is still called, in Mexico, is still called papel de china. And the colored tissue paper uh, at that time was made out of um, also mulberry. It was called rice paper, but it was actually made out of mulberry. And uh, dyed with uh, pigments from, um, not just from Mexico, but from the Orient. And used for celebrations and ceremonies. So in, in Mexico, people will take a stack of tissue paper and sew the edges together and then on top of that they'll place uh, a drawing on a heavier weight paper with a design that they want to make and then they'll cut with a hammer and chisel through the whole layer of stacks and once the whole design is cut out then they pull them apart and so they'll get multiples of the same same tissue paper uh, design but here what I do is I like to fold the paper and cut it with scissors because that's how the that's how just the ordinary folks do it, just the common folks, no, not the artisans. Because all they need is just uh, tissue paper and scissors. So I've developed all these different ways of folding the paper and then uh, different cutting designs so that just about anybody can make the tissue paper cutout designs. So for this, this particular one, I, I made a whole bunch of these in the different sizes and then trace them onto the uh, paper and then just cut them with an X-Acto knife. I use a craft knife. I have this. This is a uh, regular straight blade. And then I also have, uh, uh, this one is called a swivel blade. So the, the little blade swivels around. So you can cut in any direction. It doesn't have to be just towards you. And you can get really, really tiny holes with this swivel blade knife. It's a very tiny little blade. It's about a sixteenth of an inch wide. And so as we were talking on the phone, um, she mentioned that she had done a piece for the um, San, um, San Francisco airport, uh, a piece that was called Baile, Dance. Um, and so uh, she showed me some images of that from the website and from just, she also sent some, some materials of her work, some books and, and, and other publications that she had done. And that kind of gave us a, um, a kind of a palette of images that she has been working on for a long period of time uh, that come from Kingsville where she grew up and from that region, which I knew well, going down and visiting my parents down in Brownsville for Easter and Christmas all the time. Uh, so, I mean, it was a very familiar kind of imagery, and it was really fun to be able to tie all that together and bring that to this neighborhood, which a lot of people in this neighborhood have these same visual memories in their mind as well. So all of that really worked well together. And since they're trying to attract more Latinos to come in and take advantage of this kind of housing, they wanted to have images that the Latino population could relate to. So the first image that I already finished is, it's like you're sitting in a restaurant looking up at the ceiling of a re Mexican restaurant and you see all these tissue paper cutouts hanging on the wall. And then the second one that I'm working on is like you're at the end of a stage and you're seeing some uh, Mexican dancers, some Arabe Tapatio dancers with the skirts, with all the ruffles, uh, you know, 
moving a lot so you'll see two couples dancing at one end of the mural in the middle of the mural is a one dancer from the waist down and then on the, uh, the other end of the mural is just the ruffles so these ruffles are going to go uh, they're going to be 14 feet high so that the whole mural is visible from the freeway which is right across the street so we wanted to make sure that the, the murals would be visible from a distance at the same time be interesting to look at up close the third one is uh, three singers singing Las Mañanitas. So it's two men and one woman, and the woman's wearing a long dress. They're all playing the guitars, and out of their mouths comes the streams of a flow of words, which is the Mañanitas, the, the, the flowers and the birds, also the contents of the of Las Mañanitas. Uh, the sun coming up, the moon going down, and the, the inspiration for the spirals of the spoken word, the sung word, comes from ancient Mexico with the depiction of the spoken word in a spiral coming out of the mouth. And if it was song or if it was poetry or a very important speech, the spiral would be decorated with elements of the speech. So in this case, it's Las Mañanitas, and they're talking about los pajarillos cantan, la luna ya se metió. So I am showing the birds and the flowers and the moon going down, the sun coming up. And then the fourth design for the fourth mural is um, uh, a man working in a garden. It's inspired by my grandfather working in his victory garden. So he is watering the rows of corn and there's also beans and squash growing, the Las Tres Hermanas growing together. And then on the other side of the mural, he has uh, dahlias growing and also sunflowers. The architects and the, uh, the New Hope Housing people requested also um, a papaya tree and, and the sunflowers and a rabbit in the garden. <laughs> and so she started presenting the four themes that she wanted to, to have in the murals. And uh, at the time, I didn't quite understand how well she thought them through and how much of a story they're telling about the culture. Um, but I, I, we've come to, to really like the, the four murals, the Las Mañanitas to, to start with, and then the garden, uh, the paper cutouts as a, as a kind of a visual reminder, this is where the tradition comes from. And then the, um, the baile dance again on, on, the, on, the for, on the fourth building. And so all of these tell about, one tells about dance, which is an art form. One tells about the visual art form, the paper cutout itself. And then the singers is obviously another art form. So bringing all the, the kind of cultural parts of, of, of the arts that are active in the Hispanic community, bringing it all together, and then bringing the garden, which is really a center to, to a lot of my memories of my grandparents as well. And all of those really tied well together. So it was a really interesting, at first I thought they were just four images that she liked. But they were really four images where she really told a complete story about the culture, which at this point in time is really a nice added piece to the whole walls, all the walls we have there. So, so my paper cutout design is in 16 panels, uh, each panel for each actual panel of the, of the mural. And then they will put it all together, two panels high, uh, eight uh, panels wide so that it's uh, from the ground floor all the way up to the top of the railing of the second floor. So I, I mounted these on just some uh, black uh, paper so that I could get them scanned and uh, I, had, I labeled them. So this is panel A, B, row one and row two. So if you can imagine that each one of these panels is about uh, seven, seven feet tall by about uh, five or six feet wide. So these are the uh, holes that cannot be any bigger than six inches on the actual mural. It's, it looks very delicate, but it's, it's really, I designed them so that they, they really do um, take handling very well. Uh, I make sure that there's enough connectors so that nothing falls off or flops over. And uh, 
and everything um, all at the same time complies with the six inch restriction. I also couldn't have any daggers, any really sharp pointed areas on any of it, uh, in just in case somebody tried to climb up on the mural and you know accidentally stab themselves. So that was another big restriction. And then the fabricator will, when he digitizes it and works it with it to prepare it, he'll actually cut them apart. So each panel will be loose. Columns C and D. E and F. I wanted to use this particular design as the first one to work on because I needed to work out all the kinks with the architects. I wanted to make sure that, you know, they had uh, everything figured out as it was. They did change the dimensions on the template. I asked them to make a template so that I could then measure the paper and make get it exactly correct so that uh, then it wouldn't have to be tweaked very much. But since they changed the dimensions, then I had to go back and change all the borders and repair some of the cutting that I had already done. And in the end, it, uh, it'll look like that. So here's, here's an, an example of a section of the next one that I'm still drawing on that I did for the architects to get an idea of what visually it's going to look like. So here's one panel, and so the drawing is on the back of the panel. See, I still haven't finished, I haven't finished uh, the, actually I'm not going to use this because this is one where they change the dimensions, so I had to, I'm going to have to redraw this on the, on the new on the new uh, paper. But I just wanted them to get an idea of the detailing. So each one of these is actually less, it's going to be less than six inches wide. It can be long as long as no part of it is wider than six inches. And that's because they, you know, for security reasons. And so the trick was then how to keep everything connected and still makes sense. So I'm trying to use the same subject matter be its own connectors. So the woman's uh, face and the flowers and their hair are touching the lines of the curtain that's in the background and that those connect up to the border so it keeps it all intact. So our first and foremost objective is to take the artist's drawing, rendering, or her verbal or his verbal command and put it into perspective the way they want to see it because it's their art. We're just the fabricator and we're going to make them shine. So when Carmen drew these pieces and cut this project out on paper, our main concern top to bottom in this company, Blumenthal Sheet Metal will make her shine because there's no straight lines on her project except for the exact line of each panel on their outside dimension. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba. So I grew up seeing the banderitas at Papel Picado, tissue paper cutouts. I also saw my grandmother making tissue paper cutouts to, as making patterns for uh, tracing onto fabric to do embroidery. So she would design her own flowers and then trace them onto the fabric and, and embroider them. And she taught me how to use the scissors. And so uh, when I was a little bit older, uh, I saw this book on Mexican folk arts, and there was a section on the paper cutouts. I said, oh, I know how to do that, I can do that. So I picked up some scissors and I folded the paper and I cut it, and then I realized that I really needed to be more detailed, much more than I would be able to get with just scissors and folding the paper. So that's when I started to draw on the paper and cut it with a knife on a, on a cutting board. The 
minute I started to do the paper cutouts where I was drawing on it and, and cutting it with an exacto knife and picking it up and seeing it, immediately I thought, I need to eventually make these into metal cutouts. And that was in the early 70s. Sometimes I'm asked, well, why don't you just do a drawing and then have it made into a cutout? But I've tried that and it just doesn't translate. You really do have to make a paper cutout so that you get the nuances and the, the delicate thing, aspects of what a paper cutout can show you can do and, and then have that actually cut on metal. Every movement in the picture was captured, so there's no straight lines. Carmen didn't cut a straight line on her mural anywhere. So the individual cuts that, that our tooling cut out for her are as she cut them. Our plasma machine was purchased in 1992. A very basic um, piece of equipment. It, it was a PAC-5 thermal plasma. And being 10 foot long and six foot wide. When you get into doing art for an individual, you have to look into their mind and see what they're doing. And sometimes that, that has to be a different level of work. None of Carmen's lines are straight, and we captured every single line. And that's why it took so long to get this flat piece, which looks simple, and turn it into one of the most complicated things this company has ever done. Artwork, artwork or fabricating, the complicatedest piece we've ever done. Carmen's project is, uh, is common A36 carbon steel, um, 0.50 thick, which is uh, a half inch. The cutting process on each panel uh, is determined by the the uh, the delicacy of that artwork that's being taken away. See, we're cutting out shapes and designs and and things from a solid piece of metal. If it's really complicated and the parts and pieces are really small, then it could take up to four hours to cut one panel that's six foot by seven foot starting with the tissue paper cutouts and coming all the way into these metal cutout murals. And on the way, being also inspired by my father, who was a sheet metal worker, and I was not afraid of thinking about what I could do on, on sheets of metal. And so that with the technology becoming more and more available to transfer your, to fabricate a cutout using your own designs based on a tissue paper cutout or a paper cutout with the drawing on it, uh, it, it was not a huge leap. It's been a challenge to overcome some of the technical restrictions, but it's all doable. And so I, I feel 
really lucky to be able to bring that simple form of cutting into an architectural setting where many people can enjoy it and where it lasts a while. It's my hope that when the residents come home and when visitors come and when visitors pass by, when they see this artwork, it'll recall, it'll make them remember something about their own lives that is very familiar, that is very similar, and feel good about it, feel proud or feel happy or just savor the moment of remembering what it is that you're seeing, you know, in your mind by looking at the, these metal cutout murals. This art commission for uh, New Hope Housing at Brace Crossing was a big challenge because I hadn't quite done that many murals, cut out murals, all at once in that size with those kinds of restrictions with a subject matter that would still fit their needs and at the same time be pretty much aligned to what I've already, what I've already been doing. And as a, as a Chicana artist, it has been my objective, my goal to create artwork that brings about a familiarity to what our lives are about. So that not only those in our community, the Mexican American Latino community can see themselves in the artwork and recognize who they are in the artwork, but celebrate it. Celebrate our history, celebrate our culture, our language, our food, dance, music, the way our lives are, and, uh, and be proud of it. The greatest reward for me is to see a whole family standing in front of my artwork with all the different generations, kids, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, bored teenagers, all of them looking at the artwork and talking about it and getting excited about what they're seeing and brings up memories. It's a wonderful experience to, to get uh, recognition for what I do, especially when it's with artwork that is so closely aligned with my goal as an artist. And I think that the New Hope Housing Brace Crossing project, they gave me that opportunity to do that. They gave me almost total freedom to create images and propose ideas to them that then they chose from those for me to elaborate and make it into the finished four metal cut-up murals.